Unaware of Ralston's hiding place inside the hut, his mother and sisters faced the villagers' stern judgment. Confronted with the option to either pay for the stolen fruits or surrender her son to the angry crowd, Ralston's broken-hearted mother found herself in a painful dilemma. Long ago, in a small western community in Jamaica, there lived a boy named Ralston. He was one of three children, his two sisters, and his parents lived in a small house at the foot of the Blue Mountain Hill. His father was a fisherman who supplied the villagers with fishes from his fresh catch to feed his family, while his wife stayed home and looked after the house and the three children. Ralston was a kind and generous child who loved to share his food and toys with his friends and family. He was especially fond of mangoes, which grew abundantly in the nearby forest. He would often go there with his father and pick the ripest and juiciest ones. His father would teach him how to respect the trees and how to plant the seeds in the ground so that more fruits would grow. He would also tell him stories about the magic mango tree, a gift from the spirits of the land, who wanted to bless the villagers with a source of food and joy. The tree had a simple rule, if you take one of its fruits, you must plant the seed in the ground. If you fail to do so, you will face the consequences. Ralston listened to his father and followed the rule. He was happy, and so was the tree. But everything changed when a terrible storm hit the village and destroyed many houses and crops. Ralston's father went out to sea, hoping to catch some fish to feed his family. He never came back. He was among the many who perished in the waves. Ralston's mother tried to support her children by sewing clothes for the villagers. But it was not enough. They often went hungry and had to beg for food from their neighbors. Ralston felt angry and bitter. He blamed the storm, the sea, and the villagers for his family misfortune. As Ralston grappled with the harsh reality of losing his father, bitterness consumed him. Feeling abandoned by life, he defiantly chose to live on his terms dismissing the wisdom of the villagers. Blaming everyone for his father's death, he spiraled into a cycle of rebellion. Every opportunity became a chance to pilfer from neighbors and his mother, funding his newfound craving for sweets and treats. Ignoring his mother's efforts to provide, Ralston would raid the forest for mangoes, devouring them before returning home late, indifferent to his family's hunger. His mother, desperate to curb his insatiable appetite, served hearty meals in the evenings. But it was never enough for Ralston. Disregarding her efforts, he would snatch the pot from the stove, disappearing into the forest to consume everything, leaving his family with empty stomachs. In a hidden hut behind their home, Ralston hoarded his stolen treasures, a cache of food and fruits. There, he indulged in his clandestine feasts, ignoring the pangs of guilt as his mother and sisters went without. Nights unfolded in gluttonous solitude, as Ralston devoured his ill-gotten gains until sleep claimed him. The small hut, witness to his secret indulgences, became a symbol of Ralston's defiance and the pain he inflicted on those who loved him. Little did he know that this path of selfishness and disregard for others would lead him to an encounter with a magical force that would force him to re-evaluate his choices and rediscover the value of compassion and responsibility. Ralston's reckless behavior escalated, reaching a tipping point when he brazenly stole fruits from the market. The enraged villagers, fueled by frustration over his continuous misdeeds, pursued him with determination. Upon reaching his house, they discovered he was nowhere to be found. Unaware of Ralston's hiding place inside the hut, his mother and sisters faced the villagers' stern judgment. Confronted with the option to either pay for the stolen fruits or surrender her son to the angry crowd, Ralston's broken-hearted mother found herself in a painful dilemma. Tears streaming down her face, she clutched onto the little money she had, a meager sum that represented her family's hardship. In an act of desperation to shield her son from the villagers' wrath, she handed over the scarce funds, hoping it would appease their anger. The weight of her sacrifice hung heavily in the air a poignant moment that foreshadowed the need for a transformative intervention in Ralston's life, a chance for redemption and reconciliation with those he had wronged. As his mother and sisters wept inside, Ralston remained unmoved by their tears. Sequestered in his hidden hut, he callously shut out the cries of anguish echoing from his family home. The gravity of their despair failed to pierce the walls he had erected around his heart, 
his selfish pursuits blinding him to the pain he was causing. In his world of stolen pleasures and disregard for others, empathy seemed a distant memory. The echoes of his mother's sacrifices and his sister's silent suffering fell on deaf ears, drowned out by the relentless pursuit of his own desires. He ate as much as he could, hoping to fill the emptiness in his heart. He grew fatter and fatter, and lost all his friends. He became greedier by the day. Ralston's heart remained callous to the pleas of his family, the concerns of the community, and the well-being of the forest. In his relentless pursuit of personal pleasure, the only emotion that resonated within him was the fleeting joy derived from indulging in food. One day, he came across a mango tree that he had never seen before. It was tall and majestic, with branches full of large, juicy mangoes. Ralston's eyes widened with delight, and he ran towards the tree, eager to taste the fruits. He did not notice that the tree had a sign that read, This is a magic mango tree. If you take one of my fruits, you must plant the seed in the ground. If you fail to do so, you will face the consequences. Ralston ignored the sign and climbed up the tree, grabbing as many mangoes as he could. He ate them greedily, savoring the sweet and tangy flavor. He felt a surge of happiness, and thought to himself, this is the best mango tree ever. I will come back here every day and eat all the fruits I want. No one will ever know about the secret spot. He climbed down the tree, his mouth stained with mango juice. He threw away the seeds and skins, and walked away, whistling a tune. He did not notice that the tree was watching him with a frown, and that the seeds and skins were glowing with a strange light. The next day, Ralston returned to the mango tree, ready to feast on more fruits. As Ralston reached for another mango, he felt a sharp pain in his stomach. He looked down and saw that his belly had swollen to the size of a watermelon. He tried to climb down the tree, but he was too heavy and clumsy. He fell to the ground and rolled down the hill, crashing into a fence. He screamed for help, but no one came. He realized that he had broken the rule of the magic mango tree, and that he was facing the consequences. Ralston was about to bite into another mango, when he heard a voice in his ear. It was the voice of the magic mango tree, and it sounded angry and sad. Why did you do this, Ralston? Why did you take so many of my fruits, and throw away the seeds and skins? Don't you know that you are hurting me, and the spirits of the land? Don't you know that you are hurting yourself? And your family? The tree asked. Ralston felt a pang of guilt and tried to apologize. But the tree said, It is too late for sorry. You have to pay for what you have done. From now on, you will not be able to eat anything else but mangoes. And every time you eat one, you will feel hungrier and hungrier until you are consumed by your own greed. Ralston was enjoying another mango when he saw a group of children walking by. They were his old friends, who used to play with him and share their food and toys. They looked happy and healthy, and they were carrying baskets full of fruits and vegetables. Ralston felt a twinge of envy, and called out to them. Hey, you guys! Come over here and see what I have. I have the best mangoes in the world. They are so sweet and juicy, you will never want to eat anything else. He said, hoping to impress them but the children did not come. They looked at him with pity and disgust, and shook their heads. No, thank you, Ralston. We don't want your mangoes. We know that they are from the magic mango tree, and that you have broken its rule. We know that you are a mean boy, who does not care about anyone but himself. We are sorry for you, Ralston. But we cannot help you. You have to help yourself they said, and walked away. Ralston felt a surge of anger and shame and threw a mango at them. But the mango bounced back and hit him in the face. He felt a sting and saw that his skin had turned yellow and wrinkled, like a mango skin. He realized that he had offended the magic mango tree and that he was facing the consequences. Ralston was terrified by what had happened to him. He realized that he had made a terrible mistake and that he had to fix it. He remembered his father, and how he had taught him to respect the trees, and to plant the seeds in the ground. He decided to do the same, and to apologize to the magic mango tree. 
He gathered all the seeds and skins that he had thrown away, and dug holes in the ground. He planted them carefully, and watered them with his tears. He then approached the magic mango tree, and bowed his head. I'm sorry, magic mango tree. I'm sorry for being greedy and selfish. I'm sorry for hurting you and the spirits of the land. I'm sorry for hurting my family and my friends. Please, forgive me. Please, help me. He said, sincerely. The magic mango tree heard his words and felt his remorse. It decided to give him a chance and to test his sincerity. It spoke to him and said, Ralston, I hear your apology and I see your actions. But words and deeds are not enough. You have to change your heart and your mind. You have to learn to be kind and generous, like you used to be. You have to learn to share and care, like your father did. You have to learn to love and be loved, like your mother and sisters do. If you can do that, I will forgive you, and I will help you. But if you fail, you will remain as you are, and you will suffer the consequences. Ralston agreed to the tree's conditions, and promised to do his best. The tree then gave him a task. It said, Ralston, I want you to go to the village and find three people who need your help. You have to help them without expecting anything in return. You have to help them without telling them who you are or what you have done. You have to help them without hurting them or yourself. If you can do that, I will reward you. But if you fail, I will punish you. Ralston accepted the task and left the forest. He walked to the village, feeling nervous and curious. He wondered who he would meet, and how he would help them. He hoped that he would succeed, and that he would be forgiven. The first person he met was an old woman, who was carrying a heavy basket of firewood. She looked tired and frail, and she was limping. Ralston felt sorry for her, and decided to help her. He approached her, and said, Hello, ma'am. Can I help you with your basket? It looks very heavy, and you look very tired. Let me carry it for you. The old woman was surprised, and suspicious. She did not recognize Ralston, and she did not trust him. She said, Who are you, boy? Why do you want to help me? What do you want from me? Ralston said, I'm just a traveler, ma'am. I don't want anything from you. I just want to help you. Please, let me carry your basket. The old woman hesitated, but she agreed. She gave him her basket, and thanked him. Ralston smiled, and carried the basket, for her. He followed her to her hut, and helped her unload the firewood. He then said goodbye, and left. The old woman was grateful, and impressed. She said to herself, what a kind and helpful boy. He must have a good heart. I wish him well. The second person he met was a young girl, who was crying by the river. She had lost her doll, which had fallen into the water. She was sad and scared, and she did not know what to do. Ralston felt sorry for her, and decided to help her. He approached her, and said, Hello, little girl. Why are you crying? What's wrong? The young girl looked up, and saw Ralston. She did not recognize him, and she did not trust him. She said, Who are you, boy? Why do you care? Go away, and leave me alone. Ralston said, I'm just a traveler, little girl. I care because you are sad. I don't want to leave you alone. I want to help you. What happened to your doll? The young girl hesitated, but she told him. She said, I was playing with my doll by the river, and I dropped her. She fell into the water, and I can't find her. She's my only friend, and I love her. I want her back. Ralston said, Don't worry, little girl. I'll find your doll for you. I'll dive into the river, and look for her. Wait here, and I'll be back soon. The young girl was doubtful, but she agreed. She waited for him, and hoped that he would find her doll. Ralston jumped into the river, and searched for the doll. He found her, and brought her back to the surface. He gave her to the young girl, and said, Here you go, little girl. Here's your doll. She's safe and sound. The young girl was overjoyed, 
and hugged her doll. She thanked Ralston and smiled. Ralston smiled and said goodbye. He left. The young girl was happy and amazed. She said to herself, what a brave and helpful boy. He must have a good heart. I wish him well. The third person he met was a middle-aged man, who was lying on the ground. He had been bitten by a snake, and he was in pain. He was bleeding, and he was losing consciousness. He needed help, and he needed it fast. Ralston felt sorry for him, and decided to help him. He approached him, and said, Hello, sir. Are you okay? What happened to you? The middle-aged man looked up, and saw Ralston. He did not recognize him, and he did not trust him. He said, Who are you, boy? Why are you here? What do you want from me? Ralston said, I'm just a traveler, sir. I'm here because you need help. I don't want anything from you. I just want to help you. What happened to you? The middle-aged man told him. He said, I was walking in the forest, and I stepped on a snake. It bit me and it was poisonous. I don't have much time left. I need a doctor, or a healer. I need an antidote, or a cure. Ralston said, don't worry, sir. I'll help you. I know a plant that can heal snake bites. I'll go and get it for you. Stay here, and I'll be back soon. The middle-aged man was skeptical, but he agreed. He stayed there, and hoped that Ralston would come back. Ralston ran to the forest and looked for the plant. He found it and picked some leaves. He ran back to the middle-aged man and said, Here you go, sir. Here's the plant. You have to chew the leaves and swallow the juice. It will stop the poison and heal the wound. The middle-aged man did as he was told and felt a relief. He thanked Ralston and sighed. Ralston sighed and said goodbye. He left. The middle-aged man was grateful and astonished. He said to himself, what a smart and helpful boy. He must have a good heart. I wish him well. Ralston had completed his task and he felt proud and happy. He had helped three people without expecting anything in return. He had helped them without telling them who he was or what he had done. He had helped them without hurting them or himself. He had learned to be kind and generous, like he used to be. He had learned to share and care, like his father did. He had learned to love and be loved, like his mother and sisters do. He had changed his heart and his mind. He returned to the magic mango tree and waited for its verdict. The tree saw him and smiled. It said, Ralston, you have done well. You have passed the test. You have proven your sincerity. You have earned my forgiveness and my help. I'm proud of you, Ralston. You have become a good boy. Ralston was overjoyed and thanked the tree. He asked, What will you do for me, magic mango tree? How will you help me? The tree said, I will do two things for you, Ralston. First, I will restore your body and your health. I will make you slim and fit, like you were before. I will make you strong and agile like your father was. I will make you handsome and charming, like your mother and sisters are. Second, I will give you a gift, and a friend. I will give you one of my fruits, and one of my seeds. You can eat the fruit, and enjoy its flavor. You can plant the seed, and grow a new tree. You can name the tree, and talk to it. It will listen to you, and advise you. It will be your companion, and your guardian. It will be your magic mango tree. The tree then gave Ralston a mango and a seed. Ralston took them and thanked the tree. He ate the mango and felt a change in his body. He looked at himself and saw that he was slim and fit, like he was before. He felt strong and agile, like his father was. He felt handsome and charming, like his mother and sisters were. He was amazed and happy. He then planted the seed in the ground and watered it with his tears. He watched as the seed sprouted, and grew into a small tree. He named the tree Mango, and talked to it. The tree listened to him, and advised him. 
It became his companion and his guardian. It became his magic mango tree. Ralston then went back to his hut and hugged his mother and sisters. He apologized to them and told them everything that had happened. They forgave him and welcomed him back. They were glad to see him and proud of him. They were happy, and so was he. Ralston then went to the village and found his old friends. He apologized to them and asked for their forgiveness. They forgave him and accepted him back. They were happy to see him and impressed by him. They were happy, and so was he. Ralston then went to the market and returned all the food that he had stolen. He apologized to the vendors and offered to work for them. They forgave him and hired him. They were happy to see him and grateful to him. They were happy, and so was he. Ralston then went to the forest and thanked the magic mango tree. He promised to take care of it and to follow its rule. The tree thanked him and blessed him. It was happy to see him and proud of him. It was happy, and so was he. Ralston had learned his lesson and changed his life. He had become a respectful young man who learned to let go of his pain and treated people around him better. He had become a good boy. In the tale of Ralston and the magic mango tree, lots of valuable life lessons emerge. In challenging times, it's crucial not to forget your identity and the blessings you have. Extend love, kindness, and assistance to others, fostering resilience and personal growth amidst adversity. Embrace a spirit of gratitude and generosity, harmonizing societal rules with cherished values. Losing a loved one is undeniably difficult, but isolation isn't the answer. Let your friends and family support you through the healing process, they may be hurting just as much as you are. Honesty and respect are essential, and lending a helping hand can bring peace. Grieving has no expiration date, emphasizing the importance of processing emotions and finding joy in life. Clinging to the love and support of family helps navigate the toughest times. Ralston's story underscores the risk of tragedy spiraling a gentle soul out of control. But in the end Ralston found redemption in the warm embrace of his family. If you enjoyed this story, show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more Jamaican folklore. Hit the bell for updates. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more stories.